In my opinion, 99% of players should not be summoning for Falsia this weekend. Let me explain why. Fastidious. Fastidious. How the heck are you, friends? Let's get into it. So as you might have guessed, there's definitely a bigger reason for why I want to encourage people not to summon for Falsia. We'll get into that later on in the video, but I think not doing so is going to be the best way we can communicate directly with the developers besides me just pinging messages back and forth with them. More on that in a second. But first, there is an in-game reason when we go over her kit and what she actually does and how she's just a very slightly above average hero and probably not worth the 250 summons for almost every single player. So let me go over her kit. I will take no more than one minute. Then I'm going to go over the pros, the cons, and then we're going to get into the big picture. So, the kit. I'm on the clock. She's got a talent. They buffed this. It's way better now. It takes six basic attacks for her to gain Demon Slaying Stance. This allows her to deal true damage and extra normal damage. It is good. She's got specialized attack speed. This means raising her attack speed makes her go a lot faster than it normally would for another hero. A little incremental increase lowers her attack interval more. She's got a great burst ultimate with some big damage, both physical and magic. She's a hybrid damage dealing hero, both kinds of damage very cool also has double hybrid damage on the single target basic it's pretty solid then her first passive demon slayer's might when she's in said demon slaying stance she gets a general damage boost and then when she is shielded an extra damage boost this is pretty nice i will say though not as good as it could be because these skill ups that you see here this plus 15 percent i've gotten from three skill ups when i skill dusted her up that only goes to the general damage increase not the bonus damage increase when she is shielded if that was the case it would be a lot stronger, but it's only a 20% damage increase when shielded. Now we've got her final passive. When deployed, she immediately gets that Demon Slaying Stance. It lasts for 10 seconds. And then also when she's in Demon Slaying Stance, she gets extra rage. So I will say, even though she has a high cost ultimate, because she gets extra rage so frequently and she's got such high attack speed, she can cycle her ultimate quite quickly. Now that we've covered that, we know the kit. Let's get into the pros and the cons. Falsius pros as a hero. She's got big single target damage bursts, and it really is big. This is melee damage single target, and it is hybrid. The hybrid makes her unique, and this hits very, very hard. She also has a pretty high scaling basic attack, which works well in her kit with the very high attack speed, and she's got true damage. The other big pro for pulling for her is that she is guaranteed. You could say you could hold out for like a Valkyra banner, that's a better fighter, but she's not getting a guaranteed banner. If you have the 250 summons, you can guarantee you get Falsia. As a hero though, I think that is where the pros list ends. Just to be kind, I will say non-kit related for your Pokédex, she's a limited banner, so if you haven't gotten her before, like I have on her previous banner, and you wanna get her because you're a collector, you should go for it. And also I think it's a cool design. People tell me she looks like a character from The Witcher. I've never played it. She does look really cool, even not knowing that game. The dual blades, very nice. They call her Tri-Blade, because I guess she's got this one on the back. Whatever, she looks neat, right? Now the cons. <laughs> to understand the cons of Falsia, we have to compare her to all the other amazing fighters in this game. Not just legendaries, but also some really great epics, right? Falsia, first issue, only has one tile range, and that just does not work very well in Watcher of Realms. You can see just one tile there, especially for a hero that just does damage, right? So that ties into immediately some other issues. There is no dot damage, no damage over time. There are no debuffs. She does no support. She just deals single target melee damage, nothing else. There is that hybrid element, which is cool, but because she is one tile, she either needs to be tanking the enemies in which she is hitting, or she's like off to a side tile, which usually doesn't work work in most content. You might think of someone like Salazar, right? He is also one tile single target burst damage. That's probably the best comparison for Falsia. So why is Salazar better than Falsia? Well, first off, I must say Salazar's not that great anymore. With all the new fighters we have in the game, he's really fallen off. However, a couple things in his kit make him a lot better than Falsia still. Just like Falsia, Salazar has a great burst ultimate here, single target. However, immediately, it is much stronger because if he kills someone with this burst, he will move on to the next enemy in range if there is one. With Falsia, she will not. If she kills the enemy in only two hits, she just stops. Salazar will move right along. That makes him so much stronger. On top of that, you might have seen it, 
Bleed, he's got damage over time, true damage based off of the target's max HP per second, and it also serves as a debuff because Bleed leads to increased physical damage taken by 10%. Falsy has none of this. Moreover, he is in the Nightmare faction. This synergizes super well, right? Nightmare's filled with fighters, works really well for high attack speed heroes, just like Salazar, or if she was a Nightmare unit, Falsia. However, Falsia is a Northern hero and her kit does not synergize well. They tried to make it work for Falsia by giving her this passive over here. When she's shielded, she'll put out extra damage. You can also pair her with Elder, who when he shields a faction ally with his Lord skill, you will see their attack increases by 20%. However, this is an ancient exclusive Lord. It will be hard to acquire him and then pair him with Falsia to get her max potential. And even if you do, it is going to be hard to keep those shields up. Why do I say that? Well, if we go back to Falsia, her shields are not gonna stay up very long because of this one tile of range. Unless you put her off on a tile to the side, she's gonna be tanking damage, gonna be taking hits all the time. You might think to her A1 over here where she can get a shield. Uh, this is gonna fall off really, really quickly. It is not gonna be really strong, even in a crazy attack speed build, you're looking at a shield of maximum 5,000 HP, 5,000 hit points. Otherwise, you're relying on people like Gwendolyn or Vortex or of course Elder from his Lord skill, Gon, Isolde, Dagna, you get it. It's not reliable, it's not good. For her to shine, she would need extra tiles of range, so she is not the one taking damage and she can continue to benefit from high uptime on shields. If we look at the star, the best fighters from this faction, that is what they have. Let's look at Valkyra. Huge, huge range here, which only increases during her ult, or if you get her awakened level one. If we look at Ardia, my absolute queen, monstrous range, four tiles in front of her. Even if we go to the best epic fighter in the game, Estrid, she even gets an extra tile of range from her awakened level one, which as an epic is super easy to get. Guys, Falsia just doesn't work. She's absolutely fine. Can you use her on some Void Rift bosses? Can you use her in sticks? Will she work? Yes. Will she be best in slot? No. Is that worth your 250 summons? For almost everybody, the answer is no. I had a calculus teacher in high school who used to say Tane. The answer is no. Shout out to Mr. Serrano. Do not go for her. Let's actually directly compare her to a bunch of fighters that shine more. Honestly, Salazar, he's fallen off. He's better. Better faction synergy, huge single target burst, and he can move on after he kills someone. Now we've got no-brainers. With the new buff to Volca, she's better. Doesn't have the same burst, but she's better. Zila 2, obviously better. Valkyra, obviously better. Arrogance, obviously better. Honestly, for a lot of content and being unique, Abomination is better. Lugaru, here we go. Two tile range. He's way better after his buff. We've got okay, Absent Stinky, Valkyra, so much better, right? She gets kind of an unkillable thing from her ultimate. She absolutely eliminates enemies. She is a queen. She even does have two tile range during her ultimate. It's amazing how many heroes are so much better. Cerberus, super unique. Giselle, so much worse. She's trash. Elder, legendary lord. Ardia, one of the best heroes in the absolute game. So much better. Even as an AoE hero, her AoE is going to be better than Falsia's single target. Even when her AoE is doing single target, if that makes sense. Admiral Claw, better. Lust, better. Kaneza, ah, I don't know, maybe a wash, probably a little bit worse. Valderon, obviously better. Fallon, obviously better. It goes on and on. But wait. Epics, Dimos, Comparable, also single target burst and a better faction. Then we've got Wrath, he's free baby. Day 14, just two weeks into the game. He is a Lord, he's a better faction. Is he gonna hit us hard? Maybe not, but he's got a lot of other things going on in his kit as a Lord, someone that's doing burns, it goes on and on. He's easier to build as an Epic, I just don't see it. Estrid, sincerely, is better. Puts out decreased defense, she hits pretty hard, she synergizes with her faction better because she gets that extra tile of range. You get where I'm going with this. Falsia is not someone you wanna be pulling for, but there's a bigger reason. It's because we need to make these developers listen, and that's what I wanna talk about right now. So guys, for the past 10 days, I have been in especially frequent communication with the developers through our developer contact, going back and forth on a lot of the issues I have seen going on behind the scenes and very much in front of the scenes. I'm talking about the issues with the Forge, that Forged Ancient and Variant gear have the wrong substats. I've talked about an assault with them a bunch. We're about to get into that. I've talked to them extensively about Arena and the problems we have seen on Forerunner. This all culminated two days ago when I put out my video, which was very popular, but you know, not the most positive thing in the world. And we had over 500 comments of wholly negative feedback from you guys, the viewers. 
And since then, I've been talking with them a lot, many times a day, a lot. And one of the things we talked about explicitly was Nassalt and how they handled the communication or really how there was a total lack of communication. We went back and forth. They explained, well, this wasn't actually a nerf. It was a bug fix. And then I said, I don't care if it was a bug fix. People were enjoying it and benefiting from it. And then you guys just took it away in the dead of the night. I said, it's a fine thing to fix a bug. It is not cool to do it without communication. They said, why? I said, because it's not cool. And also you had set a precedent with Lightlock for any newer players. We had a similar bug that needed to be fixed with Lightlock, AKA an Epic was too good and they had to change it. But the way they did it was fine. They announced they were thinking about it and then they announced it was happening. And then I believe it was two or three weeks later, it happened and great. They communicated, we understood, some people were disappointed, but it was fine. I said, you can't do that this time. There needs to be an apology or something. That was last night. We log in today and we got this. Great, 100 diamonds. Who cares about the diamonds? What I love is as a form of apology. They're using the word apology. It'd be cool if they said we're sorry, but honestly, that's semantics. We communicated something to them. They communicated back. This is a good start. How do we improve upon a good start? Well, they took away our epic hero that we liked in the dead of the night. We had to be an M, bitch and moan for them to hear us and do something about it. And yet still they're pushing a really lazy banner on us this weekend in the form of Falsia, just four short weeks since our last guaranteed banner. What do we do to communicate? Well, thank you devs for giving us Falsia because Falsia is super mid. Guys, skip it. Speak with your summons, speak with your gameplay, speak with your wallet. Do not summon for Falsia. I listed the couple pros. If that is a reason for you to summon, then I highly encourage you to summon. If you're the remaining 99% of players that don't need her, don't want her, or just agree with what I'm saying, do not summon. This is by no means me going full Darth microtransaction and saying, do not spend, we're going on a strike. I am not saying that. I am saying this weekend, they have given us the opportunity to speak through our actions. The banner's mid, the banner's kind of unacceptable with the timing, in my opinion, and I know many of yours, just skip it. Don't summon this weekend. It's as simple as that. You know, we have tons more things coming. We have a lot of other things to get excited about. You can enjoy the crawling dark event if you would like. Who cares? But just don't summon. Just don't do it. That is my opinion. Should you summon? No.